with uh, with the ghoul from behind the big minecart uh, peeking out, and uh, it's uh, beady red eyes of glowing in the dark. So he grabbed a picture of a abandoned gold mine tunnel, and we'll <laughs> use that as just kind of a <laughs> mental reference as to what's going on here and where we are. So um, we're not, of course, with Monster of the Week, there's no turns or rounds, no initiative. There's no tactical combat. It's all cinematic combat. I've just uh, got these tokens on the board to kind of give us a basic commonality and reference as to where people are in relationship to each other. So we've got two tokens off to the left because you guys are still down a different mine shaft somewhere. Um, and I believe Todd had moved himself close to Kelly and then Dell also was kind of hanging out near the front. Is that just roughly about where you all agree that that's roughly about where you remember being in relation to each other? Again, mm -hmm. that, nothing here is exact. It's yeah. all just for theater of the mind, food for the mind to, to decide where you're at and what you're doing. Yeah, I had I had crept around towards the sound of her voice, right, gun drawn, and then realized, wait, this thing mimics voices, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, peeked my head around, and so I was I was right there. All right, very good. Um... All right, uh. I think if that's the case, uh, what I'd like to do is definitely shine my, I, I have the uh, police um, mag light, and I would like to try to just shine it directly into its red beady eyes and see if it has some type of uh, startled reaction or that pushes it back or anything like that. It does uh, pull back behind the cart. And... Um... So you catch a quick glimpse of it as you move the flashlight right over to it, and it, it kind of ducks back behind the cart, and you hear a you hear a voice. Uh, Corporal, Corporal, and you recognize the voice. The voice is someone from your past, Del. This is someone you recall from the battlefield. This is um, Private Landis. Okay. And and he goes, Corporal, I'm hurt bad, man. I, I'm hurt bad. But it's not it's not Joe. No, it's not Joe's not, voice. Not Joe. Okay. Um, What do I know about uh, Corporal Landis? Like, uh, he does he died. live in this area? He okay. died on the battlefield. Um, and he... Um, his, his body was not recoverable. So, um, you have believed that he was probably eaten by the ghouls that were out in the... out there in the desert. Okay. All right, so it's nothing like uh, he would be the origin ghoul or anything like that. There, I already saw ghouls before uh, his demise. Um, yeah, or maybe at the same time. It seems okay. like after that first attack, um, where you had to kind of retreat and leave some people on the field um, out in the desert while you took cover and such, uh, later you went to go back, and that's when you found you saw the ghouls in the night. you were going there to retrieve some of the your fallen comrades okay so how is kelly uh, bound anyway um do you say she was gagged she's gagged or she she appears to be tied up and gagged tied up and gagged with with what material um so todd is the only one close enough to really tell and it just looked like oh, some I see. old some old yeah. rope 
that was okay. used to, and, and maybe mm -hmm. just some some kind of cloth or something for her for Dan. All right, I'm gonna pick up like a stone and toss it at the uh, the Wendigo ghoul thing. Okay. So he's behind the cart. So you throw the rock to try to just yeah yeah, yeah. hit something over there. Um, and he's you hear Landis say. Oh, man, Corp, it's bad. I don't feel good at all. I need help. I need help. You're about to feel a whole lot worse. Medic. <laughs> uh, medic. I need a medic. All right, do I hit do I hit it with the rock or should I roll? No, on? it's it's behind. It's it's un, like under full cover. So. Okay. I, it ducked back when you shined the light over there. So it's actually okay. kind of hiding behind the cart over here. But what um, what's interesting is you can hear the voice coming from over there, but then the voice changes and it becomes very low and gravelly. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm going to move as much as I can over to uh, Todd and Kelly. Okay. And yeah, I don't. I don't think we should be separated. Separated at this moment. And as I go up to uh, uh, Kelly, um, I, I definitely want to check in more detail. Uh, like, is it reasonable how she's bound and gagged to be done by the that creature that I'm seeing? I mean, uh, sure. does I, it I'm have to... actively trying to undo those? Okay. I'll start with the gag. Okay, so you're just trying to un untie her. Okay, so she looks pretty scared. She is like, um, what is that? What is that? Is that the ghoul? Is that the Wendigo? Ma'am, you sure got us in a lot of trouble with the police. And yes, that is the, that is a ghoul or Wendigo. Um... <clears throat> So the deep voice from behind the cart is like, I'm coming for you. All right. You I have my gun. friends on the field. Yeah. You left them for me. So this whole time I have, my left hand is holding the mag light and the light is, I'm, I'm scanning around the area to make sure that I don't see like a, glimmers of movement or it 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 surprising us by moving somewhere else so i'm constantly scanning the area with the light to make sure i see where it's going and in the other hand i have my uh, my magnum ready to which was uh, blessed by uh desmond the holy magnum oh, yeah. right yeah well not not really blessed but <laughs> it was, it was shot ironically once. infused yes all right, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna play this cautiously at this point, um, j just to make sure that I I have at least a visual to see uh, if it's moving out from be behind the car yeah. or moving further so back. So you have there. you have lots of debris that's between where she is and now where you two are with her. There's uh, like a little half wall worth of debris that you're crouched down behind, uh, and then some distance to the cart, and then he's behind that mining cart. So it looks like he may have been trying to use her as bait to lure you. Um, is it trapped? Or, is it is, is it is it in a tunnel that's kind of like collapsed at the end, or is it a dead end? No, it's a bigger. So it's a little bit wider tunnel. It's got two sets of tracks. Uh, that's why I grabbed this picture because it seemed to kind of meet the needs. There are side tunnels that go off on either side, as well as that main tunnel that you were walking down. So. You, you've kind of gone a couple different directions here, and there is a really um, kind of, this is almost like a junction area. Mm. So there's tracks going this way, and then these other side tunnels that have something going on there too. And you notice that in one of, uh, one of the tunnels, you do notice that there is a, uh, when you're not shining your light is when it becomes really obvious. There is some other kind of movement in and light coming from from down there. It's not very bright, 
but um, it's almost like maybe someone is carrying a torch or a lantern or something like that. Okay, separate and from the ghoul. some distance, yeah. There, you can just kind of see the reflections along the wall. And that's down one of those side tunnels. So you're kind of in this main junction area uh, where the ghoul okay. has kind of set up his little camp. All right. So, um, yeah, if I see that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out down the tunnel. You know, hey, who is that? Who's coming? Who's got that light? Do I hear him? Yes, so you can hear. Yeah, yeah, you hear Dell calling down uh, from you up from up ahead in the tunnel. You you can hear him. He's uh, calling out. Of course, the the darkness of these uh, these tunnels kind of swallow up sound and light. Just the uh, the rock just it makes it very dense. So he does sound distant. And then you also hear some other kind of raspy grumble, though you can't make out the words. For the two of you in the junction where the ghoul is also, he calls his voice out. He says, um, it, not in hushed tones, but not loud either. Uh, the ghoul says, uh, reinforcements. You're in trouble now. Hmm. Hmm. Well, at, at the sound of Dell's voice, I would uh, hold the sword up a little bit higher. Uh, and I guess... Hmm. Yeah. So outside I... the the range of what your sword can give you visual light along the cave walls, the, uh, the tunnel walls. You see this gap of darkness, but up ahead, there's occasional flickers of light, like a flashlight, but it's it's uh, some distance. Um, I'm gonna call out, Dill, is that you? Okay, so you guys yeah. can hear each other and talk now. Desmond, Oliver, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Come to the sound of my voice. We 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 got we got the ghoul over here. All right. As soon as I hear that, I go into a full sprint. I run slower. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you run, but more somewhat hobble. Not not yeah. too bad, but you you did uh, twist your ankle or something, right? When you fell, yeah, took some harm. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh god. Okay. So. Um, the the ghoul then you can hear him launch off the ground and some stones some debris and whatnot scatter as he as you can hear him jump um his voice goes from being low behind the cart to above the cart um and he's just out of uh, visual sight uh you are scanning around with your flashlight the only source of light you have uh, because for some reason the other hunter doesn't carry a flashlight. Just you, Joe. Mm -hmm. You're good. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and he says, "And now it's time to eat." What do you do? Yeah, you ain't eating nothing, sucker. And um, I fire a shot into the the direction of the ghoul. Okay. All right, so um, a loud shot. This this does uh, permeate all the tunnels and uh, fill it with lots of sound. That's a very loud gun. And so <laughs> you hear that cool. shoot off and it goes, and you can hear it ricochet off some of the rocks. Um, yeah. And the ghoul um, is, you, you catch him in your flashlight as he, he you catch him midair as he's leaping towards you. Todd, okay. you're you have a chance as you see him uh, while Dell is trying to bring his uh, pistol to bear. What do you do? Uh, I am going to be untying uh, our captive. Okay, v right. v cap, so, not ours. You're working on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're my prisoner now. All right, Dell, you <laughs> you you uh, 
you have a you have a chance you can see him diving towards you caught him in the light he is flying towards you he does have this dro drooly gross like uh, sl saliva just flying all over the place while he's coming right at you okay um yeah i've seen worse in the soup kitchens so i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to uh fire a shot all right so that would be kick some ass so let's see how that oh uh, yeah unfortunately i'm really bad at this i'm not good at, i i can kick nobody's ass um but i'll give it a shot literally Okay. You get your ass kicked instead. All right. You suffer harm or get captured, but don't inflict any harm. Now I get my XP. Yeah, you can have an XP, and he, um, you shoot, but of course it goes a little wide as you're scrambling, and he literally lands on top of you and rolls with you, and um, he, you, his claws just like bite right into you and, and slash along your skin. Yep. So you're going to take three harm. Three harm. All right. So if you have any armor, I don't know if you wear any okay. armor or not, you can reduce that harm by the amount of armor you're wearing. But otherwise, yeah, I do you're not. Gonna take that. You're going to take that three harm as his nasty, dirty claws, his digging claws lash right into you. Right, so I'm going to put okay. you somewhere over here, and he's literally going to be right kind of on top. Of you. Okay. Here. Yeah, I, I holler in pain uh, so that the others know that I've been hit. I don't know. We just heard someone yell out that they were in pain and needed needed help. Yeah. yeah. It turned out to be a ghoul. I have a taste for <laughs> soldier. I don't mind you're a little old. Thanks for coming. Joe called you, did he? Perfect. All right. So with that, um, what do you guys do? You're running up the, the tunnel. What do you guys do? You guys do see the flashlight go flying around. It's it's not um, shining on anything in particular, but you can't see that apparently there was some tumbling going on, or maybe the flashlight tumble is hard to see. But uh, what do you do? Keep a uh, Dell in sight because uh, he is my only source of light. I don't have, he has a sword and I have nothing. That's right. So you've got Dez with his sword. That's right. Yep. And uh, so you're just trying to keep him, you're trying to keep up with him. <laughs> wait up, man. Wait up. <laughs> and I'm trying to get to wherever <laughs> Dell was as soon as possible. He, he's running as fast as he can and he runs faster than, you know, it's like trying to keep up with Usain Bolt at this point. So uh, he's he's pretty fast. All right. So are you going to pour on with some of your um, monstrous abilities um, to enhance your running? You're, you're going to lay I, into it, right? I don't think I have the monstrous ability that increases speed yet, but I will go as fast as I can. Right. Okay. All right. So um, if I could use if I could use magic to enhance it i would but i don't know if that's gonna be something that would fit with the uh yeah within the confines of what we established i i i agree i think you're just trying to get there as fast as you can meanwhile todd yeah. you're in you're in the dark now you're getting just a little yeah. bit of reflected light from the flashlight that's just shining up against the wall at this point while the ghoul is going to bit going to town on dell uh, what do you do? You're not quite done untying her. The knots are were very yeah. tight. Uh, should I act under pressure with this uh, light source yeah. getting? Sure, if you're going to just try to finish getting her free, yes. Yeah. Um, the, the default here is roll plus cool. Okay, cool. See if you can do better than a two. Hey, there you go. Oh, that's better than a two. Nice. Yep. Nice. Okay. 
So with a 10, um, I believe that you're going to succeed just fine, and you do what you okay. set out to do. So you'll get her completely untied. All right, so while you're um, getting along with her and getting her freed, she's like, oh, finally. Um, Del, back to you. You're uh, getting your own ass kicked. What is it you want to do at this point? So, because I have one of those uh, weaponized mag lights, uh, I think I'm going to use that to um, beat him in the head. So, let's see. So, I guess... Uh... Do I have to do kick some ass again? That is. That is absolutely kick some ass. You bet. Yeah, this is where I'm really bad. <laughs> All right. Miss. Oh, Again. I see. Yeah. Yep. I have a negative one on that. All right. So go ahead and mark another XP. You um, are going to um, already, uh, you're trying to swing that flashlight to bear. And yep. he he's actually going to knock that out of your hand and then just bite down on your shoulder. Okay. Some white hot searing pain bites into your shoulder. You're going to take three more harm. And I think and, that's... Yeah, that puts me almost at, at the end. Yeah, so that you are in really bad shape. Um, not quite out of the fight, but you are absolutely... Uh, and you feel as... Um, as that bite sinks into you, you also feel this burning cold. I don't know if you've ever been or touched anything. It's so cold that it kind of burns you. It's the same. It also feels like that spreading um, from the bite on your shoulder. Uh oh. Right. Does that mean you're unstable? Yeah, I'm unstable. Oh, dang. Gee. Took two attacks, and one of our guys is almost down. Yep. All right. So um, it is time for me to shift the focus over to Desmond. What are you going to do? Have I reached the area yet? Yeah. Yeah. You, you're you're see... arriving now. Yep. Do I the see flashlight kind of uh... rolls down? Yeah. So your your light okay. is come into the area and kind of help to illuminate most of the room. It's dim. Um, across uh, this whole junctiony room area, but where you're at, it's bright enough to see. Like, you know, yeah, you know, it's still dark, but you, your magic sword is glowing, so it gives okay. you plenty. So you see a ghoul just ah, on Desmond's shoulder, and he's like, "Ah!" I'm Del. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, Del. I... Yes, right. <laughs> Y'all pick names that... too close. <laughs> That's why I go by the full name Desmond. It's two syllables. Uh, but uh, I'm as soon as I see that, I'm rushing over there, and I'm taking a swing at it with my sword. All right. Very I'm going good. to knock it off of Dell. Okay. So Let's do some, kick some ass. Kick some ass. Okay. Uh, it's a 12. All right, so he sees you coming, obviously, because you're bright uh, compared to the darkness of the area and the very, very focused uh, light of the uh, flashlight. So he comes up at, he looks up at you, his face has got a lot of blood and saliva just kind of dripping down and of uh, his very sharp teeth. And, and he looks up at you and you come across with a swipe of your sword. And he's going to uh, take so three damage. Okay. From the enchanted sword, the uh, infused sword, as it were. Yep, and if good. he has any resistance to normal weapons, that is, neg I believe that is potentially negated by the magic effect on my blade. Gotcha. The magic tag. Okay. Also, since I rolled above a 10, I'm going to choose the force them where you want them effect. And I'm going to force him off of Dell and at least a few feet away. 
potentially. All right. Using my yeah. enhanced strength to kind of knock him off. off again. That was a really good swipe. He flies back off of uh, Dell and kind of rolls around and lands, you know, kind of he's in a crouch on the ground with his hands on the ground and um, and full ready to spring kind of crouch. He's, <sighs> and you see his really long tongue as he just kind of licks up some of it. And he's like, yeah. I'm coming back for the rest later. Not gonna happen. And I'm going basically position myself between him and Dell. Okay. All right. So about this time, I think Oliver should be arriving. Okay. So you're you're um, trying not to trip on the yep, rubble limping in. in the tunnel. Yeah. While Holding. You're. you're can yeah, hardly the see the light left without you, and so you're now come in and you can now make out the room that they're all in. Yeah, and I have the shotgun that I think uh, Desmond blessed when in fact he cursed it. <laughs> right. Oh, <no. laughs> uh, so I'm going to uh, try to move around so I don't have anyone in the shot, and then try and shoot this Wendigo. All right, or, go for it. Cool. Yep. Uh, Let's do some kick some ass and see what happens. T take that. As I pull the trigger. Okay. All right. Well, what was the effect of the curse again? Oh. <laughs> I got an 11. Yeah. I rolled well yeah. for a change. You did. <laughs> And so, uh, um, what was you, the curse again? Did you hit it. Him. Was it uh, a negative one harm, or was it like a negative one to the roll? Yeah, it's uh, it was negative one harm. So, okay. um, and the the weapon is not magical in a useful way. It's just magical okay. in, a, in an unuseful. Way. So as okay. you um, as you shoot, some of the buckshot that comes out of that looks like fireflies and it kind of goes kind of swirls different directions uh so it's not just all aimed like some of that shot was not uh not useful all right so so hey, you're gonna a do a little bit extra light i guess how much yeah unfortunately not so normally does three harm and yeah so um it's gonna do two harm and it does he does have a tough hide so he's really only going to take one oh good because um your magic is not as useful as yeah. it could or should be but you also oh, get maybe a an extra effect too why don't you choose something off of that list uh ba -ba. now when it says you suffer no harm at all what does that mean when <laughs> forever I, well, <laughs> otherwise, no, yeah. no, no, no. So, kick some ass. The default is you do harm and you take harm. Okay. Because uh, he's going to, he's going to have you. But if you, in this case, you can choose to not be harmed, right? You yes. have the advanced version of the move. I don't think that that comes up until later. Only oh yeah, that's a twelve. You're right. improved. Yep. So you I only rolled a ten, not a twelve. Yep. So you can suffer one less harm, and he can take a swipe right. at you with his claws and have you take. Uh, I, yeah, I'll try and suffer one less harm because I'm already wimping. Okay. wimping. So that would be two harm that you'll take from his claws, uh, and if you have armor, you can use that against it as well. Oh, <laughs> oh, dang it! I'm unarmored. Oh. Uh, God. There's more of that if you don't run, buddy. Yeah, so you shoot at him. He he catches some of that, and some of the little fireflies kind of go flying around and disappear. And then he just suddenly he's on you, and it's like just a big swipe of his. His fingers are longer than normal. I just just slice right across your thigh or, or something like that. So you take a little bit of damage. All right. Dell? Todd, yep. either of you um, could take the spotlight now if you want. 
Um, I'm going to like back away and, you know, crawl. Uh, I, I'm pretty debilitated right now. So, uh, and then I'm just going to fire a, a shot. Okay. So. All right. So you're going to take a shot at him. All right, go. But uh, it, it, here's the thing. I'm going to do assess that if I take a shot, does he have the, is he going to come right back at me? I, I don't want to risk getting hit again. He, yeah, so, he can. So, all right. uh, yeah, then, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I am going to, um, yeah, uh, crawl behind somebody <laughs> so okay. I don't die here. And that's basically I, it. I am right next to this overturned minecart. So you can just scoot back behind me with, yep. uh, what's her name? Kelly. Ke Kelly, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I will, I will cover your retreat. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. all I'm going to do. That's all I can do, really. All right. So we've got now Desmond and Oliver trying to score off against this ghoul while well, the very wounded and hurt. So you literally have a really, uh, and you're trying to crawl back behind him. And um, you've left your flashlight. It's been knocked out of your hands, and it's just shining up against the wall in not a helpful direction. And um, so you can make out from just some of the, the overflow of that light, plus Desmond's sword is flipping around all over the place. You can make out what's going on. Um, as, as I wave Dell back behind the yep. cart, can I take off, take a shot off too? Sure. Okay. Oh, so I'm in my... Yeah. Okay. Partial. All right, so you're going to do some harm from your shot, and he is also going to kind of kick up um, some, like grab a rock or whatever and pitch it your way, and you're going to get uh, hit by that. So okay. um, how much harm do you do? Uh, three harm with the right. magnum. And is I, that I one think... enchanted? Or no? Uh, uh, I, well, yeah, I forget. Did you do all of our weapons? Yeah, I attempted to. Okay. I know I failed with Oliver. Both yeah, my weapons. You... <laughs> 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 uh, I am pretty sure you succeeded on mine. Then I would have remembered if you'd. Uh, yeah. Tried and not and uh, and not. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have. Uh, armor, uh, like the number two armor listed under armor on the left. Is that automatically calculated from something? Yeah, it's just the uh, gear. You have gear that's armor. Okay. Yeah, body armor or something like that that you're wearing. Uh, it's not on my character sheet. I think I think that may have been an artifact from that other uh, character that this was. Oh, okay. All right. So this rock is going to hit you for one harm. And Can I uh, attempt you'll... to protect someone. Okay, you like want to jump bat, in the way bat of that? the rock out of the air. Like okay. try to bat it out of the air or potentially get hit by it, I guess. Okay. Go ahead and try uh, that. Not one of my strong suits, but I'm willing to attempt. Oh, dang. Nice. Apparently it is. Yeah. So uh, that's 10 plus. So I protect them from harm and I suffer some or all the harm or I can add and I can add one of these extras. Uh, I will inflict harm on the enemy. So yeah, okay. I will slash at him as he's throwing the rock, which will kind of throw his fro okay. off. Course, I guess. But so it says here, on a success, you protect mm -hmm. them, okay, but you suffer some or all of that harm. Mm -hmm. And so you've got harm coming your way, but then you're going to inflict the har harm on them. So you, you're going to like maybe end up breaking the rock into pieces, and some of that rock gets batted back to him, and some's going to hit you. So, yeah, that, that works. You'll take 
um, the one harm from it hitting you, like it gets in your eyes or something like that. Here, I will it's actually it. not because of immortal. Uh, I t- anytime I take harm, I suffer take one, one harm less. less. Good. Okay. Yep. All right. So it's so, Rick. It bounces off you, and um, you aim one harm back at him. Cool. And that also just kind of glances off of his uh, thick undead hide. All right. So um, Oliver, he uh, he as he ducks underneath from De- um, Desmond getting in the way, he he's getting ready to come at you with another swipe like this. You can see him pulling back. What do you do? Uh, bah, bah. Huh. Uh, I will <laughs> r- scream and back up and run away. <laughs> stay back, stay back. And just fire a shot in the air. Okay, so that would be like act under pressure. Okay. And if you can succeed at that, then you can get out of his, um, his range and maybe keep him at bay with a gun. Okay. So um, not quite the best outcome because you're, you're, you get away, but part of the reason you get away is that you end up tripping on some stones on the ground that kind of mess up your ankle again a little bit and you just fall and hit the ground. And so he, he looks over at um, the rest of you and he's like, I'll have seconds later. And he be, literally turns and starts to run um, on all fours back down the tunnel that you came from. So he's headed kind of back out of the gold. Can I attempt to use magic to, uh, I don't know, trap him in a way? Use kind of a telekine- bit of telekinesis to grab his foot and hold him in sure. place? Yeah, go ahead. Hmm. Oops. Oh, That's a ten plus again. three. Wow. Well. Yeah. It is weird. I am a very weird person. Okay, so he gets some distance down the tunnel already, but you can barely make out his, just because he's moving so much, that actually helps you to target him a little bit with your magic. And you, um, it looks like you could probably trip him up without glitching on your magic or anything like that. So he will fall to fall to the ground like you've tripped him and, you know, yeah. The, messed up, the effect I was going for is tr- the, the effect I was trying to go for is trap a specific person, minion, or monster from the list. Okay. So. Um, are you thinking of just grabbing him telekinetically, or are you thinking like yeah, you're going to... grabbing him telekinetically and holding him in place? Okay. All right. So you feel um, a great deal of resistance to your magic. He is quite strong. So you are battling with that. So I'm going to have you basically. Um, at the mercy of your own spell, just in concentration, holding him. You're like grappling each other at a distance. Okay, so you're holding him there, and he's uh, he's struggling against you. So you're kind of fighting it too. Your your muscles are even tightening up in response to the mental um, strain that you have of just trying to hold it. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna say through gritted teeth, get him. Please. Again, I I will stride forward, level a gun at this thing's head, and pull the trigger. All right. He's a little bit down the... I can imagine him further down the thing. So you can kind of run down there. Uh, Yeah. And and so you can run and shoot while you're running, if you'd like. That's just fine. And try to hit him. No problem. So go Uh, ahead. You're not going to be point blank with him, but... Yeah. Uh, Sure. I'll take a shot while I'm running. Uh, May as well. I, okay. I'm not. I'm not low on ammo. All right, go ahead. Let's see Hopefully how you go. I this time, I want you to act under pressure. This. Okay. 
Oh, well, you get to mark things XP, go to hell. So that's good. Uh, yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're running down toward him, and you shoot um, your gun, and you're still trying to get to him, and all of a sudden, he leaps at you, and um, you feel um, this magic around you, but the, more importantly, you feel this gust of frigid Arctic air that is enveloping you as well, as he um, basically is kind of grabbing at you, He's not, so instead of trying to get away, which he was doing, you fired and he kind of just turned around and this whole wall of freezing cold air just hits you. And um, so you are actually going to just fall to the ground and uh, like you just got knocked yeah. over by this really cold air. Not that it was solid, but it was just um, very forceful, just a lot of air. Um, Maybe okay. that's for the best. There's there's not a whole lot of light down here. Right. You are very far from any source of light. Um, and so it's even hard to make out the walls from where you're at because there is not a lot <laughs> well, of light. Well, not, not anymore. Smack. Yeah. <laughs> so you know right where the floor is, though. The ground yeah. is right there. Um, all right. So, Oliver... You yeah. you are uh, you can kind of clamber back up from where you tripped. Is there anything you'd like to do? You can uh -huh. see you can see down the tunnel there that um, Todd was running toward him and he was shooting his gun and all of a sudden he got kind of just almost like he hits something <laughs> like it just got clotheslined. He just whoop, and he's on the ground. Uh, <laughs> it's caught in like some kind of telekinesis thing. I, I will limp slowly, awkwardly to it, loading my shotgun up one more time. Alright, so you start heading down the tunnel. The thing was yeah. really fast and got pretty far. Yeah. Todd was not able to make it all the way yeah. to it. But you can see its beady red eyes in the dark. He's not moving anymore, so he's really just kind of blending in his gray skin, kind of blending into the dark, the darkness all around, uh, except for his red eyes. Um... So you start heading that way. You're kind of limping, yeah. Uh, cursing the stupid terrain that yeah. you're in, and yelling um, at him, "Come, come eat me, buddy! Yeah. I taste good." <laughs> <laughs> he just hey, so. <laughs> all right. So you head that way. Are you doing anything aside from just moving? Are you going to do any other kind of? I don't think action I can, of any kind. I have to get close to him to get use my shotgun. So. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have to. Uh, I, let me, I don't think it, it probably has like the close tag on it. it yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, so I'm You're just trying to get close to. Him. Yep. Yeah. All right. So Desmond, you have him. You start. You're you're straining a little bit, especially now. You feel the cold, almost like it's seeping up your telekinetic grasp. Um, you just feel that he's. He's building up some energy like he is going to take action here. So what do you do? Hmm. <laughs> I suppose. Okay, so for a minute you're going to strain a little bit now. Yeah, I guess um, I'm going to just try and increase this the hold I have on. All right, you're just going to double down on the grasp, on, on holding him tight. All right, good. Yeah. Um, Dell, from where you're at, um, you're in a, a lot of pain, and you feel consciousness wanting to flee. Um, you can. You, you're getting probably just cold from some of the blood loss. Um, Kelly looks at you and she 
kind of gets a in the shadows that are left from whatever light is here. You can see her. She looks at you and her eyes get pretty big seeing how bad you're torn up. What do you do? Um, I think I'm going to try to read a bad situation. Okay. This is a, definitely a bad situation for you. <laughs> okay. And, um, yeah, let's see how this goes. Oh, that's so it's a partial success. And, um, I would, I would look at, uh, can I say what's the best way to protect myself? If I'm the victim, <laughs> um, sure, you could, okay. you could probably, I mean, you've you've been w wounded enough that uh, you know, hey, can you help me put some pressure on this? Or yep. something. you can ask for Kelly to try to help. You. Yeah, I'll do that. Like I'll say, ma'am, you, you take some of that, take, take that gag or whatever, and apply yeah. it. You know. <laughs> The dirty rag. <laughs> yep, exactly. Man, I don't use it, use so it as well. a tourniquet. You know, doesn't have to be on the wound. We'll deal yeah. with the, yeah. Put the tourniquet around my neck and tighten it up. Make <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. the pain go Something that I would do with my trainees as an EMT. <laughs> um, taking taking blood pressures. Oh well, yeah. To, you, you, you know, if you if you can't get it around the the arm, you need a, a thigh cuff. But you know, what if it's what if, what if it's like an amputee? Uh, you take take a jugular one. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, uh, one, all right. So one she will help yeah, you. Yeah. So I yeah I go, man, Miss Kelly, can you just please help me put some pressure on the wound? Yeah. So she will help you with that. So we have that All right. on there. All right. So um, I I will say that um, you could with without any additional strain, you can remove the the unstable checkbox. If you strain again, that's going to come back. Okay. Uh, okay. As long as you yeah. kind of stay, stay. No, nope. cool. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm pretty Otherwise, stuck at this moment. Open back up and bleed again. All right. So, um, all right. So, Todd, on the ground, you can get back up, but you feel this cold air rushing over, rushing over you, apparently coming from the ghoul. Uh, it seems to have some kind of uh, ability to affect temperatures, the weather, that sort of thing, which might explain that heavy snowfall that came out of nowhere. You. You're why I had to hike in that. And now, up close, I will do, do a better job of shooting it, hopefully. All right. So describe how you how you Is go this... about that, and then yeah, um, so I I approach uh, slowly, sort of shivering, and uh, bring the gun up, watching it clip carefully as uh, it twitches in Dell's mm -hmm. Desmond's Desmond's <laughs> uh, clutches. <laughs> And uh, you know, try to be aware of any uh, any more spells it casts or something, keeping its eyes fixed. Like no, no, no. And shoot it. Okay. All right. You bring the sights to bear right on him, and 
that's going to be a success. You, um, you're going to inflict harm on him. So is your gun do three, you said? Uh, three. Okay. All right. All right, so you hit him hard, and he recoils from the shot, and you just hear sizzling as your that hot bullet goes right into his flesh. Um, okay. Desmond. Um, you're hunkering down trying to hold him in place. So I want you to go ahead and do another use magic to okay. continue this whole um, trap on him. Alrighty. He seems to be acting with his own, um, his own. That's force another power. six, another ten. Okay. All right. So in this case, um, you can absolutely keep him trapped. So um, he is very busy trying to like get away. You can see him. He's now sorry to really start to shake and try to wrestle his way out of what you're doing. He is snarling and um, foaming at the mouth trying to get free. Uh, is it Oliver. possible for me to, yeah. to get closer to him while I'm sure. holding him? Or am I, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't I'm... say you could run, but you can certainly close some distance. I'll take, for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that as well then. Okay, all right. So you start to go steadily closer. get closer to him as I'm holding him. All right. Face. So Oliver, getting left in the dark again is just <laughs> apparently in the cards for you. Tell me what it is you want to do now that. So you've got Dell over here. He's laying on the ground, and Kelly is. Uh, there was a flashlight on the ground not far from you. You could grab that if you wanted to, uh, or you could go try to follow Desmond and his glowing weapon as he's starting to make some very herky-jerky steps down, yeah. down yeah. the tunnel. Okay. I'm going to just keep moving towards the, the guy uh, using Desmond's light and just trying to get close enough to uh, unload on him. All right. So uh -huh. you, you just, you know, shake it off. It's just an ankle. And you're going to go ahead and kind of work your way trying to keep me up with Desmond, who is going pretty slow. So it's for once, you have a, a really good chance to stay up with them. Or is there anything you want to do in process of that? Uh, I don't think... Mm -hmm. Now, I, when the last you acted, you were already moving toward where you're already trying to close yep. the distance? Okay. Yes. So, so at this point, then I'll, I'll say you're ahead of Desmond, All right? And and so you're you're almost right where Todd is. Todd is in is in pretty close range to the goal. So when so, you reach, you're getting closer to Todd. You're in, you'll be in close range. You could, you could take a shot if you wanted. To. All right, I'm gonna you know aim my sawed-off shotgun. <laughs> uh, okay, to do a little cross. Praying and then fire. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Okay. <laughs> the only good news here is you get to mark an experience point. Have you leveled up yet? Um, I already did last time. Right. So, how much does that shotgun do? Three harm. Okay. All right. I mean, Wait, so unless it's still doing two, it one less three, because of do the one curse. less harm. Yeah, it'll do one less harm. So, unfortunately, what this means is that maybe it's just this cold air that's pushing back, but uh, something happened, and your shot actually um, is going to hit Todd. Oh, Todd, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you've got... <laughs> Un unaware that you were going to be shot from behind, you moved a little bit to the right when you should have gone to the left. And so these, all, what you do see is these fireflies come 
kind of from the right and go around you, but you feel the bite also in the back, it, right in your back, like the back of your shoulder. There's a bite of some buckshot right there. And so you're going to take, um, I'm going to give you two harm, two, two harm for that as you get bit right in the back. And, and Oliver, you're, you're looking incredulous. You weren't even like, it's, you weren't aiming at him, but it seems like it just went over there. Ooh. Uh, wow. So, so you okay, Todd? Sorry. Sorry, man. <laughs> Uh, I I have been, you know, beaten up on the ground here, and it's cold. But uh, yeah, the, the the buckshot hits me in the shoulder, and I just start start reeling. There's something else behind me. Um, yeah. Oh, careful where you point that thing. I think he mentally controlled me to do it. <laughs> Blame it on Damn the you. <laughs> Ghouls do that, right? Blame it on the ghoul. I'm pretty sure at this point that it's a Wendigo. <laughs> Wendigos do that, right? <laughs> okay. Um, Wendigo. There you go. Uh, all right. Oh. So you... Um, the The... The ghoul is uh, now while he's struggling in this thing, he also is uh, growling and grunting, foaming at the mouth, but then he begins to make some kind of bizarre enunciation. And you feel um, the kind of the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Todd, Oliver, what do you do? The air is getting thicker. Uh, try to cut through that with another shot. Okay. Not today, mister. All right, so off another shot. All right, let's go. I want you to do some kick some ass. Where did that go? Uh, there it is. Oh, God oh no. <laughs> okay. So it finishes chanting and... Um, as you shoot, um, you almost at the same time, there's a cave in. The tunnel starts to just collapse right on top of you. And so you are going to take uh, two more harm as you kind of try to get back, but your shot goes wild and, um, you know, ricochets somewhere. And you're. Can I try and protect? Todd, like, push him out of the way? Yeah, you can grab him and pull him back. I'm close sure. to him there, right? Yeah, so the tunnel just begins to cave in, and um, so, Desmond, you feel an interruption to your telekinesis as this tunnel is starting to cave in. It's not just a, like right in one spot. It's literally the, the ceiling is just weakened, and it's there's debris falling everywhere, and it's kind of forming this little mountain um, that's filling up to the top. Where's this little mountain filling? Between at? you and the Wendigo. Okay, would it be possible for me to... Uh, hmm. I suppose swap my concentration, like, instead of... To try to keep it from caving in too much? Instead of, or rather trying to make the rocks land on the ghoul. I'm trying to help push the rocks his way. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you can do that. Yep. And I, and I imagine it's there's possible that the, it might help with also like giving us a way out. Sure. Potentially. Yep. Yep. That nice. is a, yeah, 13. Yeah. So again, no glitching. Uh, You're yeah. doing pretty good in your magic lately. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, yeah. All right. So the way I see it is you'll be able to do that. And um, but you have to let go of him to really try to push these rocks yeah, over that, toward him. That was I was 
That's what yep. I was thinking as well. Yeah. So you leave a gap. You leave a gap that you can crawl through uh, from the ceiling as you are pushing the rocks the other way, and you're hoping to hit him. So um, you will probably be able to inflict um, perhaps a harm on him uh, doing that. Uh, and he just, you can hear as, uh, some hissing as uh, a, he kind of almost vanishes under all of the noise of the rocks that are falling. You're pushing the rocks, trying to keep it from um, sealing the tunnel. Um, uh, and you've done a really good job. Move towards, towards the gap yeah. as well, if I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you managed to get a lot of the, the stuff from doing too much. Uh, and so it'll be pretty easy for you to uh, widen that gap at the top uh, and make it so you could climb out. But it looks at this point like the Wendigo will have escaped. All right, so okay. you three who are closest to the cave-in, um, you are fairly well saved from additional harm of falling things. It's just smaller, you know, rocks and tiny boulders as opposed to some of the bigger pieces that uh, you were initially uh, having to deal with. So you clamber back and, and Desmond is moving forward as you are pulling back and he's pushing, you can see him kind of pushing these uh, rocks and such uh, as the cave-in comes to a stop eventually. He's held, trying to hold it at bay. So that's where we're at now. So what do you do? Uh, uh, it's not my fault. <laughs> well, can you at least help me out here? It's, yeah. Todd's uh, you know, face is, is covered in dirt and scraped up. His shoulder is bleeding. <laughs> Wait, um, what do you need, Todd? And uh, I, I need some rest. <laughs> um, but I don't know uh, how I can help you with that. Do you Jimmy, want to? <laughs> do <you have> something, <laughs> something to clean this off. Need oh. some water. Uh, I think I don't have water. That does. Del, do you have water? Uh, uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> I do not in, ha in fact have water, but I might be able to assist in some way. I can get you snow What does it and look like it. the damage? What does the damage look like? Oh, yeah. Uh, what damage? He, but he's talking about cleaning something off. His wounds? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been, you know, buffeted around by this icy cold wind uh, slammed to the ground. My face is all muddy and scraped up. Uh, my shoulder is inexplicably bleeding. Um, buckshot. So I um, will... Uh, yeah. a, can I attempt another use magic to heal one harm? Yep. I imagine it being kind of like me... Uh, trying to remove the buckshot from his back via telekinesis. Rip. And okay. <laughs> giving it some, giving it some, like, infusing a little bit of my psionic energy into the flesh to speed up the healing process. Okay. God damn it. The, go, the, the buckshot goes out. Yeah, so let's figure uh, out um, some kind glitch. of a glitch. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, do we want a problematic side effect? It has a problematic <laughs> side effect. Uh, or I could draws... take arm instead. That would be problematic. Except if I did take the harm, then it would be negated by my immortality. Do I choose the glitch, or...? Uh, no, I think... Choose an effect and a glitch. The keeper. the keeper will decide what effect the glitch has. So I, I choose the glitch, but you decide what that glitch means. 
-hmm. Okay. So then I will take the I take one harm, ignore armor magic. Because I'm probably the least hurt person here. Okay. Even if it then does, even if it I'm does gonna, affect. Then the backlash of using your magic. Um, what I'm going to do is that harm is fine, but you are now growing very, very hungry. Uh oh, do I need to make a roll? I think that makes some sense. I think that, yeah. Okay, so for my curse, it'll be the first time my curse comes into play. I need to uh, roll Act Under Pressure. Got plus one to cool. Oh, that's pretty decent. I got some good self-control today. <laughs> okay, so you're feeling weak and hungry. Um, and I managed to avoid eating anybody. But you, yeah, but you don't lose, you don't lose control and just start you sucking the life out of, of these people around you. Yeah, so you just kind of see uh, my eyes grow slightly more gray and I kind of wince and close them for a second before opening them back up and they're fairly normal. So do I, so I, I've got five harm, so that's going to heal one of them. Yeah, does so you can uncheck un that box. Yep. Does that also yeah, stabilize the unstable? Yes. Okay. Yep, uncheck the unstable. Even though I still oh. have four. Yep. Yeah, it's, it, if you take another harm, then that would put you back in that game. Okay. All right. So um, here you are. The uh, Kelly goes over and gets the flashlight and is now using it with uh, with Dell, and um, she has um, been trying to help deal deal with his wound. Okay. And uh, it's very painful, but you're you're a tough old us, so it's not like you're rolling around in any kind of delirium. You're just um, in a lot of pain, and you grimace a lot and kind of grunt and whatever. <laughs> and uh, but you're not going to die today, probably. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully not. All right. Yeah, I, I uh, well, Kelly is uh, applying pressure to my wounds, and and after she retrieved the maglite and came back, I said, uh. Oh, Miss Kelly, we in a whole bunch of trouble. <laughs> we we gotta we gotta think carefully now, cause th that thing is out there. It's gonna it's gonna come back for me. It's gonna gonna go and it's gonna gonna hurt other people. And the now we gotta deal with the police. The police think that that I that I killed you and you're you're still alive. So we need your support here to to get us out of this bad situation. <laughs> well, what? What what do I need to do? We gotta work together. I mean, the police are gonna come out, come looking looking for us. They they think we we, we they think we're all bad. They think we are murderers, but but we're not. We're just trying to take out this ghoul. You saw that thing with your own eyes. We're not crazy. So you gotta support us when we when we talk to the police. And I don't know if I need to go to a hospital or not. I, I kind of think I do. And I need I need somebody who's who's gonna vouch vouch for us. We need to work together, okay, Keller, Miss Keller. Yeah, 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 yeah. If we oh, don't work hey. together, there's gonna be more people gonna die. I think I have I think I have something that might help. She reaches into her little um, messenger bag purse, and um, she pulls out a little shot bottle of Fireball and starts to open it. I think we're supposed to put this on your wound, right? To disinfect it. Oh yeah, yeah. Here, give me that. I, I I grab it with my hand and I just chuck it down my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. no, thank you. That helps. That's that's He's good. Like, Painkiller. Oh, Painkiller. Okay. That maybe that will help too. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So, long story short, with a little bit of care, you guys can help uh, open cave in a little bit better 
and, and then um, help Dell out, uh, kind of carrying him where needed and supporting him while he can kind of walk. What were you going to say? I, I was saying I could carry him out if it needed be, if need uh -huh. be. Yep. And he looks like he's very vulnerable right now. And you, you really could, uh, like, if he just died, no one would know that it was you. <laughs> <laughs> that just sucked the last bit out of him because he's, you know, so close. He's in bad shape. Do I need to make a roll? <laughs> While you're carrying him, I think you should make a roll. Definitely. Okay. Well, let's hope. I, I don't taste good. Exactly. <laughs> I do. Uh, really, we here. Different kind uh, of flavor. Yeah. It's an eight. Uh, so there's a mixture, I guess. It's partial success. I've had like so, three different you, types of hepatitis. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, not eating gonna, your physical I, body. I'm not eating your physical body, just your soul. That's not uh, yeah. any oh, that, that's that's even worse. That's <laughs> that's that's pretty ugly. <laughs> yeah, much worse, much worse. Okay, so you, I'll let you keep control, but you now need to decide if you're going to separate from these people for a while to go try to get things under control and rest or you're going to figure out how to feed all right um would i be able to maintain enough control to get out of the cave and then separate or do i need to no yeah i i think right now it's you're walking up the tunnel and you are um you you can't take your eyes off of Dell, and then you start. Everyone starts to look pretty good. So, all right. My soul probably doesn't look that good. <laughs> What's was someone else mine taking Dell off my hands? Oh sure. Let me do it. It'll be easy. <laughs> I'll slowly limp over to Dell. You're the, you're actually the limping guy and the least hurt out of everyone, I think, aside from the guy who wants to eat everybody. Uh, come, come on, Dell, I got gotcha. you. I'll I'll hand Dell off to Oliver, completely unaware that he is being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Todd will offer a, another shoulder as like a crutch. <laughs> we can we can split the uh split the load. It seems I've I, I think I gotta go to the VA clinic now. Well it, Send me to the VA we, clinic. They know what to do with me. <laughs> no they won't. I may have pushed myself <laughs> a bit far in that fight. Um if you wouldn't mind, I need to... I will meet you, the rest of you later. I need to recharge my mana stores. Urgently. Re recharge? Where? What? Let's, let's get out of here. I don't no... believe I will be able to make it out of this cave unless I take drastic measures. That there's a the reporter's right there. Right? That holding <laughs> spell was rather taxing on my reserves. Well, I we, we can't just leave you here. We'll wait with you. He's I... leaving us. Why? <laughs> will be fine. Trust me. I am the only one who came out of that unscathed. Do you think yeah. I can handle myself? At least for a little while. Especially after having harmed the creature that much. He is not likely to return for another bout. At least not for a while. 
Yeah, I think he he probably needs to recharge too. I won't be long. I just need a little bit of time. <laughs> that means that thing will be hungry. We need to find yeah. it some bait. How you feeling, Dell? <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen better days. I've really seen better days. <laughs> Anything, me being left behind may be some sort of bait and draw him off of you. I did do the most damage to him, so and he seems like a rather vengeful creature. I don't think. Do you think he can eat you? Probably not, but it won't stop him from trying. Alright. I, I gotta be honest, I feel I don't feel so good. I feel uh, that thing, it bit me. Put its teeth in me. and it, It's saliva. And I, I, I feel like something is like spreading through me a little bit. We like, don't I don't know. Like, 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 you here. Just get Dell to a hospital and get him treated. Sure. But this is going to be tricky because the police are on the lookout. There's probably like an APB or something to, to match my description. So that's why we need Kelly with us. She's got to she's gonna vouch for us. It's not going to be tricky. Uh, I can talk her way out. <laughs> All right. I'll meet up okay. with you at the hospital. Sure. That sounds like a good place to go to uh, recuperate. Yeah. It's not exactly the kind of recuperation that I need. Or maybe it is. is. Mm. (laughs) And might not be best for anyone. Well, you you, uh, know what's best for yourself, so we'll meet you back at the hospital. All right. And I will, like, step over towards the wall close my eyes and kind of look like I'm meditating I don't know if any of these guys know how magic works so I'm just doing my best to make it seem mystical <laughs> gotcha so, alright so you leave the fifth wheel behind the other, rest of the four of you um, continue to kind of limp your way out of the mine um, tunnel and you're back up on the side of the of the hill where you're at and you slowly work your way down um, the snowy um, which is again uh, maybe another half a foot has already snowed while you were in there you weren't in there very long but uh, it's uh, fresh powder everywhere so you um, you work your way down to your cars that are there. I believe you hid one of your cars or not, I don't recall. But uh, Kelly has her car and you have yours. So between the two of those, you probably can get what you need um, transportation back to. Like some people may need to, they're not driving, they may need to like be holding the seat back or something um, while these cars drive. Now you um, Kelly's car is not going to be super great in really bad weather but you guys probably have did you say you had a an SUV of some kind or a van? What was it? It's still Oliver's car, got right? something. No, Oliver has something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of car I, did you steal, Oliver? I think it was a van. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a van. Okay. Yeah. All right. So not again, the best thing, but it was not the yeah. best thing in a bunch of snow either. So, yeah. um, all right. So I think that um, an act under pressure role might be in order to see just how well you can get right. yourselves to the hospital. Right. There you go. All right. So you slip slide around a bit. You almost get stuck at one point, but you pull it out and you manage to to make it all the way there. So I think that's probably going to be just fine. 
Um, yeah. All right, so you make it to the hospital. It's like a regional hospital. It's not um, super big, but does um, support uh, a winter resort. So they do keep a uh, plenty of staff and such for occasion. The storm has them on a little bit um, pr probably um, um, busy with some hypothermia cases and people who are really sick, you know, with the flu or whatever. So the emergency room is fairly busy as you guys pull up there. Um, there are several people hanging out um, waiting for for attention in the big way. Uh, okay. So I suggest we say I was attacked. We were attacked by a bear. Bear? Does it look like a bear bite? I don't know. He got bit in the shoulder really, really good from larger jaws than than human. So could be. Okay. Well, it can only be two things. It can be a bear or a cougar. I don't think they're going to accept anything else. Uh, bear, bear sounds right. Except bears hibernate, so it's a cougar. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Somebody woke this bear up. <laughs> <laughs> He's we, cranky. We kicked the bear in the cave. Right. Uh, okay. All right. So you guys are uh, trying to get some attention at the hospital. And um, so you can get bandaged up, and they inject you with um, some various medications to try to make sure that uh, infection doesn't set in. So I'll give you back two harm. And Todd, uh, same with you. They'll bandage you up, and you can get back two harm. And... Um, so I think, Oliver, you're at what? How many harm have you taken? Three? Yep. Okay, so you, you can also get back two harm from being treated uh, your ankle and such. They can get bandaged up and you know, get a boot or something. You can Thank walk you. in to give you extra support. I will. Thanks. I'll walk out my, in a boot. Ugh. All right. This does um, not look cool. So before you finish getting treated, um, they're doing some of the final touches. Um, and they've got you in these little exam rooms that are just basically curtains that separate you. Um, and they're doing the basics of getting you patched up. Uh, nothing requires um, surgery of any kind. Nothing is quite that bad, but it's bad enough that uh Dell you're going to still be really sore, right? So yep. How many harm how many harm will you have? Two or three? Four. Uh, four left. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so you took a a beating pretty good. Well, no. no. If you heal back two harm, oh, you were at 6. Yeah, yeah. I was at 6. Yeah, I did take. I was unstable. You took that away, and then subtracting now the two, yeah. I've got four left. So you've had stitches and uh, antibiotic injections, and you know, local anesthetic and all that kind of stuff to get you patched up. But exerting yourself, putting yourself in any further in harm's way, obviously will rip all those stitches open and put you back into an unstable situation. So be mm. aware of that. Um, the sheriff shows up and he wants to find out um, what's going on and why okay well we make sure that Kelly doesn't leave our sites so that she's there yeah she'll hang out with you mm -hmm. so it's been a few hours two or three hours probably get yourselves patched up the way you are and so the sheriff kind of wrangles you into one area together and he's like 
All right, what is going on? Sheriff, you tell us. There's something bad out there. It's attacking people, pretending to be me. But, uh... Not... Someone pretending to be you. Yep. It's a cougar. Yeah. A cougar <laughs> yep. pretending to be you. Yep. Okay. You want... So... Yep. You have to decide, officer, if that's what you want to go with, or do you want to go with the truth? <laughs> Because you might be better off living the rest of your life thinking that was a cougar and just going home for the night. <laughs> Kelly looks at the sheriff and says, he's not wrong. You might be. Um, sheriff, it was it was uh, a Wendigo. I'm pretty sure it was a Wendigo. And the sheriff's like, come on, that is superstitious nonsense and she said <laughs> think what you want but that's I was there too and you know me she says yeah yeah I do but I'm not going to swallow this so easy so she, she certainly says, needs a lot of evidence why don't you Take individual statements to describe what it was and then compare those. So they don't get the talk beforehand. You can separate them, take individual statements, have them describe what they saw, what it was, and you tell me when you're done. If you think it's believable. Yeah. Go as right. Mr. As Mr. Uh, Dell's lawyer, I have to advise him to remain silent. <laughs> you, you were holding him for the woman we've just talking to's murder, correct? I believe that murder is not a thing anymore, right? So what crime are you uh, going to accuse him of now, officer? No, that was the guy who isn't here. I just well, took him in for being an accessory or something while we figured out what everyone else was doing. And then right. somebody made a phone call and told me to let him go. Yeah. Yeah. Should they call again and say, just take the night off? Because <laughs> we can arrange that for you, bud. Well, I think we might want to keep Mr. DeLotte in protective custody here at the hospital. I put one of my deputies here to keep him from leaving while he continues to get better. You know, what are the excuses? He has to stand trial or something. He's actually, uh, he is a key witness against several capos from New York City, and he's in witness protection under FBI protection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He put, you know, Manny, the butcher, Rincine, into jail for his life. So, yeah, there's hitmen out looking for him right now. I see. Yeah, it's too dangerous for me to stay under in confinement. All right, so what you want to try to manipulate someone? Sure. I'm going to I'm going to reboot my um my focus right. Wow, it's sort of it's acting weird. Ooh, nice. We're still here. Yeah, could be worse. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. That's weird. Yep. Yeah, I also got kicked out too. Normally, I have to drop all the way out of Discord in order for that to work. All yeah. right. Um, okay. So, what is it you're trying to get him to do? Get to let you guys go? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah. 
just uh, go home. All right. So this says that he'll do it, but only if you do something for them right now to show that you mean it. If you ask too much, they'll tell you that if anything it will take uh, they'll tell you if anything it will take them to the school. Okay. So um, he'll let you go, but only if you do something for him right now to show him that you mean it. Right. Uh, <laughs> what is, is he going to require statements? <laughs> it's <laughs> you're gonna have to stay in town and you're gonna have to um you're gonna have to let a deputy stay with you sure sounds good just you know not with us just watching the door right so we don't get away he doesn't need to be. Yeah, if you leave the, the hospital, time. he has to go with you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll be glad to bring him with us. Another guy with a gun. <laughs> All right. So his name is Deputy Laclede. Laclede? Laclede. Does he have a family? Yeah, yeah, he's young. He's um, in his, you know, late 20s. All right. Sure. Send him by. I don't know if okay. you've seen Del, but we're probably not doing much tonight anyway. No, yeah. All right. So, um,. What are you going to do while you're at the hospital? Any ideas? Um, I say, is is anybody good enough to leave? Because I say we 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 got to we we somebody's got to research this these Wendigo things, find out what its habits are, what its weaknesses are. By now, I I think the library is probably local library is probably open. Maybe something can be found there. I'm not very good with computers. Maybe somebody can search for something online. But while we're down like this, we got to start preparing. Preparing with all the knowledge and necessary information that we need to take this thing down. Uh, Todd, you're the knowledge guy, aren't you? Uh, yes, I can definitely get behind doing some research uh this this is a uh, an exciting exciting development here we can can learn all sorts of things about yeah can what Google happened when to go yeah and, and we we gotta we gotta know what what yeah how does it operate what what its abilities are is it gonna go back to to that mine what's it gonna do so we we have to figure out its behavior inside and out, because I, mean, I would bet it's going to come here and try to eat you, man. That's my bet. It's, it's, it's well, it's, it's liking soldiers. It says it's going to come back. And, yeah, but it's this is a pretty well populated area. I don't. I'm not sure it's going to get through. So we have to take this time to figure out what its weaknesses are. Is it? Does it hate sunlight? Is it allergic to silver? Is it is fire going to take it out? We we got to figure all this stuff out. Is it going to is does it create a lair? Is 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 that whole mine shaft? It's there. Is it going to be living out there? Is it going to be staking out there for the entirety of the time? Is it a den with children? Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he hunting? We got fifth. Yeah, we gotta figure all this stuff out. Do they have any treasure? These are all important facts. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, it'd be cool. And uh, 
what happens when you get bitten by one of these things. I think that's pretty important to figure out as well. Yeah, as I looked out at my graying, horrible wounds. Oh. Ooh, maybe I'll go to the library. <laughs> <laughs> the library, the font of all knowledge. <laughs> the library, the least likely to get bit by your friend who's turned into a Wendigo. <laughs> right. If he's at the hospital, you want to be not at the hospital. <laughs> For sure. All right. So the hospital is um, it's a pretty well-equipped modern medical facility. It has several departments. There's surgery, intensive care, psychiatry, even a morgue. Um, and I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so does the town have a library? Do we know? Sure. Is it, it going to be, be open a during a blizzard? No. no. Hopefully, at the very least, it has a computer you can use. Because I highly doubt a local library is going to have a whole lot of information about what would what most people would believe is a mythological entity. Didn't you say there was some college town around here, or some university like in the next next town over, or something like that? No. Okay. That was, that was your session zero was at a university like yeah, in, yeah. In Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here uh, is a good place to kind of hold up. You do even have probably some decent kind of internet access even when some parts are down because this hospital has some redundant systems to stay connected during times of... Uh, yeah crisis and bad weather and such. So you could probably go into an office or something and use a computer there. You could sneak your way into one of those places. There are um, some security measures in the hospital, some to kind of restrict freedom of movement a little bit um, and to keep certain areas from just people wandering around. So um, you might need to either bluff your way in to some place to get to the offices that have access that you want, or you may have to find a key card or something to use, to steal one of those. So um, what sounds like a better way for you to figure out how to get around in that hospital? That and you have a deputy that's soon to arrive that you have to stay yeah. Yes, so stay with uh, Gal. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm there. not going to. I'm not going to be uh, performing any espionage movers, sneaking around and logging into computers. <laughs> I'm going to be resting. <laughs> but yeah, just we'll just I'll just get you a white coat, and then you'll be up here wherever you want, Todd. <laughs> okay, so Todd and Oliver seem to be like they're the other ones that are going to go. Dell's hanging out in the bed um, I eating wanna... hospital food. Mm -hmm. And he probably likes it. He actually likes it. This is good. This probably do. Yeah. <laughs> Dell's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Desmond, how are you dealing with your stuff now that you're finding your way out of the mine after everyone else is gone and what are you doing? So um I don't trust myself around a, a in a hospital right now, obviously. <laughs> um so I think the I think the way that Desmond imagines he could be the most useful right now is trying to, you know, get kind of a, an idea of which direction the monster actually went when it left. Hope Maybe it has a layer or something and he could locate it and go back to the hospital, let the guys know, or something like that. So, uh, but besides that, I have a lore question. 
so my curse requires me to feed on uh, human beings, right? Yep. How would it work if... Because it also operates as an attack, which has a harm that ignores armor. Uh, would that attack work on monsters, then, in that case? So, I, the way I kind of would, would see that is that, um, yes, you could, depending on the monster... Um, so if, may... if a monster were the type of monster that used to be human, could I technically <laughs> feed off of it? Yeah, but that might also be the equivalent of um, trying to eat um, fast food leftovers that have been out for a couple of weeks left on the counter. But to a starving man, food is food. Yeah, you don't want to get You're sick. You're out in the middle of... To eat that kind of food. <laughs> right, but... Getting sick is better than starving if you're in a bad situation. Sometimes, because at least it gets you keeps you going for a little while. I I would think that if you were super desperate, you yeah. might try to feed on a ghoul, but you'd have to be super desperate, right? Right. That would be. I'm not at that would... point yet, but I'm just asking that to as something mm -hmm. I can keep in mind for later. Yep. I don't imagine your... finding a very good food source out here. Uh, but yeah, so could I go back to where the fight happened and see if I can, if, uh, I don't know, did any of my strikes against the creature make it bleed? See if it left any he took behind. some. He took gunshot wounds and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to try and find a spot of its blood and try to use that as a way to track it, essentially. Get its, uh, what's the word, a psionic signature mm. from its blood and try to use okay. that to follow it via, you know, kind of psychic scent. Okay. All right. If that's possible. So, Maybe. Uh, use magic then, or would I need to I might go even think Maybe, well, investigate would be just to find the blood, to use the blood to try to track him. That might be bigger magic than normal. Okay. So, what do you think I would that would require? Uh, let me just populate bigger magic real quick. So we can know what we're talking about. So, what are you thinking? Mm. Would the blood think, count as a rare or weird ingredient? What I think right now is that if you try to use more magic, that uh, you might lose control. Right, but there's, as far as I know, there's no one around for me to lose control against right now. No, Which but what I mean is you to... might, you, you, yeah, right. So since there isn't a, a, a ready target for you right here, mm -hmm. you may just kind of lose your mind and go hunting, right? Which well, would um, also mean that I would hunt the most. Okay. You would go to town. You would go to town where you knew that there was definitely people to feed on. You might okay. go right back to the restaurant or the hotel, be full of people that you could drain. Uh, so that would be if if I'm I, I think maybe use that would be the downside of your big magic. That would be the side effect or danger that you would face if you didn't do well with big magic. Okay. Okay. Now that's Right. Okay, yeah, so you think about that. Meanwhile, could I try using investigate a mystery instead to just try and figure out how where it went uh, with mundane means? Then yeah, that would be just you trying to track it through the snow yeah. or something like that, right? 
Okay. okay. Plus one to sharp. Let's see how this goes. Worst comes to worst, I get an XP. Oh, it's partial success. Mm -hmm. Just what I need. Where did it go? So, you... It went into... The fur, deeper into the forest. Okay. So you can track it for a while, but with the weather being what it is, it doesn't... I can at least get a decent direction where cold where never bothered you anyway. But yeah. um, you you would you you know that it's going deeper into the mountainous forest, and so um, the floor the forest is um, a type of wild, so they it. It's a place where it can hide, ambush. Um, it can use its powers um, unhindered out there. So that would put you at a disadvantage, especially with low magic reserve. So do you want to continue yeah. to hunt after it? You get the idea that it's gone, gone deep into the forest. Do you want to go hunting for it or just know that it's it went that direction into the, further into away from civilization further into the wild it doesn't really give me a great idea of where it went you can you know it went deeper into the wild you can take your best guess and based on you know facts about where things travel where it might go you know it obviously wouldn't go to a mountain peak but maybe it might follow a waterway or a roadway or something like that so if you find like a you know a um a forestry road or something like that maybe that might be a way it would go or something along i mean you could, if you want to you can make another um investigate a mystery and if you succeed at that you can um get a better idea of where it might have gone okay i'll give that a try okay let's see oh that's even better than previously mm -hmm. uh <laughs> hey. So I'm going to continue with the where did it go, but I'm also going to... Should I ask what type of creature it is, or... Uh, I think you know that already. We know it's a Wendigo. Uh, say... We know that... We know some of the things that can hurt it, at least. What do we? It's when you get bit. Yeah, that could be an valid... aspect of what of what can it do. The, Go ahead. The the okay, so I'll, I'm going to answer your question, whichever one you choose. I'm going to answer mm -hmm. your question in the context of what you could possibly know out in the wild, mm -hmm. trying to track it. So you're not going to be able to <laughs> ask um, what can it do, except I might tell you that it clearly left a great distance or something along you know what i mean you like makes sense uh i example, think so. my best bet then is either what is concealed what is being concealed here or what is it going to do like try to get an idea of whether it's whether i can confirm whether it went to, to ground or is just heading off to hunt something else essentially so i'm gonna go with uh what is being concealed here because that seems like okay. a better option yep uh okay where did it go and what is being concealed here all right so you you make your best guess just on the terrain and that sort of thing like probably didn't climb straight up probably didn't just go down into that ravine um nothing down there so probably went along here did this or that you, you kind of try to 
track it and follow it while your hunger continues. And um, you eventually get to a place of um, really weird. Um, you get to a an, a wall that is high security. Um, it is a gate, but it's like concrete and reinforced steel um, and has a really high tech um, security device so that a vehicle could drive up and um, unlock the gate, drive through and have it close behind them. Um, and there are security cameras. And so it's surveilled and it um, seems to block off a great deal of, of space. So you could try to go around, like find another part of the fencing or something, but it looks like it's a secure compound of some kind. Does it seem like this was the location it was coming to, or just something that happens to be out here? I I don't think there's a way for you to be sure, but it's weird that you found this out here. It's like in the middle of nowhere. It's like on a on a not well traveled rough road that might require you know a Humvee or a really good SUV of some kind to to navigate the road and um, but then all of a sudden there's freaking high tech stuff right in the middle of nowhere are there any guards on the walls nope it seems to be all seems surveillance like like um there's probably something watching from somewhere but yeah. no without no getting outside. Gotcha. without getting too close you spot yeah. four or five redundant camera systems hmm. like and they look sturdy they're heavy duty that is odd is there any kind of label outside the gate or none whatsoever it's, it's very plain yeah unmarked that this is... smacks of if if Dell were here, he'd say conspiracy. What would he yeah, say? Th- he would say this is definitely a uh, high tech military compound where they're performing okay. secret experiments. See, that's what he would say. Oh no, unsuspecting victims. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, so I'll just have to wait for that when I find Dell again and, and sh- tell him what I saw. Yep. Um, so I've got a rough idea of what direction the monster went. I found a weird high-tech facility in the middle of nowhere. That is, and I'm could be, could be hungry. where, you know, you, there are a lot of indicators that you feel are accurate enough that this may be where the monster came. Yeah, that is good correlation. Uh, but on top of all that, I am also still hungry and haven't found anything, any people to eat. So. You were looking for a guard. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say if I saw a guard, it would probably require me to roll to not attempt to no. feed on him, on them. So, luckily for them, they use automation. Uh, so, if I don't see anyone around, I will, I suppose, begin, uh, I'll, I'll kind of make a note of the location of the facility and start making my way back to okay. the town, I guess. Yep. And hope that I don't run into anyone on the road. 
Okay. All right. So at the hospital, um, the deputy shows up and um, he's going to hang out just outside the room, but he yep. checks in on you loyally um, every few minutes. I look just through the, the window or whatever. Yeah, and just to get in the habit of it, I'm going to start like telling him what to do. Like, oh, we want to sit over there, make sure to keep it when one else enters. You know, every stuff he would already be doing, but just so that later on when I give him an order for, for something he's not supposed to be doing, he'll be more likely to listen to it. <laughs> right on. Whatever. Get in used to it. All right. Good. What are the other two of you? Well, you, Oliver and Pod, what are you doing to get to any restricted areas in the hospital? Oh, it's probably well, where the best technology yeah. is for you to do your yeah. research. We'll take a look around, hopefully for some doctor jackets, uh, clipboards, and uh, of course, <laughs> uh, also, um, I want uh, silver. Didn't we say silver would hurt this thing? I want some silver. Did yeah? Did we figure that out? I could have sworn that was brought up. I can't remember exactly. But I thought yeah, it was brought up. Yeah, because there was a whole thing that uh, Todd didn't. That Todd forgot to bring silver bullets. I mean, he he remembered to pack them, but he forgot the pack <laughs> on the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I I found that out before uh, joining you. Yeah, that's right. So. So I'm looking for uh, silver of some kind that we can turn into a weapon. A lot of surgical steel looking things, but not yeah. a lot of silver. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to get some doctor jackets and mm -hmm. some clipboards and yep. just walk back to the top secret areas. Uh, and if I have to pick open a door, I will. <laughs> I can do it very fast. I'm, like, I'm I'm good at this, Todd. Don't worry. <laughs> I I will follow your lead then. Yes. Sounds like you've got this. Uh, yeah, this part of things down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how about um. How about you do um, an act under pressure sure. to obtain uh, all this stuff, like maybe from um, I'm cool. Uh, I'm cool. A locker room or something like that. I'm cool. Yep. I'm cool. Okay. All right. So you guys <laughs> duck into a um, kind of a locker area, and you grab some medical clothing and. Quickly put that on, get your little doctor uh, jackets and stuff. Um, Be right I'd back. say that with a 10, you could also probably grab some ID, but your picture doesn't match the picture on the ID. Yeah. So if anyone were to scrutinize it, yeah, that's fine. In the, in the slightest, it would jig would be up. So are you going to? Use that or just walk around with the jackets and hope nobody it, has their ID. I'll take the ID and then, because like that, is it the kind of ID like the scan? Is it like a name badge? Picture ID that gets buckled on it probably has some scanning ability. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'll take it then. Just, okay. uh, I mean, how far off is it? Is it like. <laughs> it's not that big of a hospital, but it's big enough. It's probably got like. I meant like the people. ID. Is it like just some like guy? Like it's a, it's a black one. It's like it's meant to clip. It's meant to clip on the pockets, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pocket yeah. sized. Yeah, I'll just I'll hook them both so they're like they're accidentally flipped inside, so we have the IDs, but uh, you know, just like we clipped them wrong. Okay. Uh, and then we'll go looking for uh, an area that we can get into uh, okay. that Todd can do his research. All right. Sounds good. So you can go in there and you can do both of you, if you want to investigate a mystery. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll go ahead and roll that and see what you can learn from that. All right, so. Del. Skip over to you while they're rolling, and I'll come back with them to let them ask their questions. Okay. So, yeah, I'm trying to eat as many Sloppy Joes, boiled eggs, and uh, tins of Jello uh, that it takes <laughs> for me to restore my health. Okay. <laughs> Not sure that's the way to go about it, but I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you're kind of just, and uh, what are you watching on the TV? Um, yeah, I'm into uh, news. Um, so, yeah, I don't believe any of it, of course, but it's interesting to see what propaganda they're trying to sell to. to yeah, you're looking for patterns. Folk. Yeah. Like, whatever they say, you know it's the opposite, so you got to figure out what the opposite is. Which opposite is it? Yeah. And what are they really trying to say? Or it's an encoded right. message to, yeah, I got it. How are they trying to manipulate us and, and for what, what purposes, what nefarious Mind reasons? Mind right. control and brainwashing. Yep. Right. So that's, yeah, that's generally what I do is I definitely, I, I like flipping through the national news, local news, or whatever, whatever possible news uh, I can get to, to, to figure, figure out what's going on. Okay. All right. So Todd, you've got a partial success. So you get to ask uh, one question. Uh, so I want to know what, what can it do? What, uh, would it bite be? Uh, yeah, okay, so you're trying to connect with the people on your on your dark web connections it, or whatever, where you communicate. Yeah, my um, well, the actually, WhatsApp that... or whatever, the Telegram <laughs> yeah, channel that your, you communicate. Your with. fellow librarians, even <laughs> lore librarian. <laughs> All right, uh, so, so library would, network. You want to know what it can do. Um, pick a plus one forward to investigate it. Let's see. Okay. So that would be a nine. Still would, wouldn't be a whole lot of extra help for you. So no. you're trying to figure out what it can do, and it, uh, particularly about its bite. Is its bite... Mm -hmm. What does it turn people into other ghouls and wendigos? Um, the answer is generally yes. Um, there is support in lore to th that, yes, that, that that's one way that wendigos make more wendigos is, but generally speaking, they the wendigo must feed on human flesh. Hmm. So to become a Wendigo, the victim must feed on human. Yeah. Kind of like a vampire has to drink human blood and then yeah, feel, right? Okay. Well, I um, think the food service here at the hospital is not going to include human flesh. Maybe no, not. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit skeptical of that. Soiling green shows up on the plate. Uh, is that a turkey sandwich? Like that People could be. All right. So with a uh, a ten, um, it says here one hold. can be spent to ask the keeper one of the following questions. How come seven to nine you get hold one? Oh, hold two. Hold two. So you got two holds. You can ask two questions, yeah. Oliver. Right. Okay. Uh, and we definitely confirmed. I'm, I'm going at town. We're definitely looking for silver, right? We need silver. Or yeah. that hurts. All right. Can I use, uh, can I see if there's any silver being concealed here in this hospital? Like, can I search through the records and see if they had anything? inside this place that we could use as a weapon against it? Sure. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, in the surgical department, you will find some items that are uh, silver, and that's largely because silver is known to be a natural uh, antibacterial. Okay. Anti-antimicrobial. 
right. I'm gonna go rob a hospital in a second. Uh, what else should I ask? It is. You can uh, find some. What can it do? Some medical tools that are made of silver. So. All right. Yeah, I'll go do that patient, after patient dance. belongings. Yeah. Uh, so what can it do? I guess. I'll, can I Google that as well? <laughs> Because I don't have You're any. You're asking what can uh, a Wendigo The do? Wendigo, yes. Besides control okay. the weather. All right. You know, it can control the weather. You you know it can shape shift. Do you? Is that on your list? Yeah. That would be something you would know. Yeah. Yeah. The one more thing that you might learn that's new is maybe one of its, uh, one of its weaknesses. Certainly is strong and fast, but you do know that silver is vulnerable to silver weapons, which seem to cut um, through their thick, uh, leathery, dead skin, and uh, probably can, can cause more damage. So silver bullets or silver blade would cut it. All right. Um, All right. And, and fire. Fire. Okay. All right. There's no fire to find here. <laughs> Any flamethrowers in this hospital? <laughs> no. no. There's uh, uh, there, there are definitely tanks of oxygen. <laughs> I don't think yeah. that's all you, all you need is a match and you've got flammable a gas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we need something flammable. We need a match and then something for the oxygen to burn. Wouldn't it be easier just like get gasoline? Yes. Right, I'm going to go with gasoline. I don't want to be walking around with stolen oxygen. <laughs> there are definitely, you could get gasoline because there yeah. you know that. Um, in a shelter around the side of the hospital, there are generators, and those they'll, they'll have fuel tanks. Yeah. Since we're at the, why you just need a container that has a spray function? Yeah. Since we're just there, I'm gonna go also Google how to make a Molotov cocktail <laughs> and print that out. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I will. Uh, you want to head back to the room? I'm going to go get those silver. You can come with me if you want. Uh, yeah, I'll head back and uh, we'll spend less time apart. Yeah, just make sure to find like a closet out of the way to store the coat in case we need it for later. But obviously, you don't go back to the room in the coat. Just <laughs> <laughs> walk back in, like yes. <laughs> Okay, so in the process of going around and doing all those things, you um, will notice that um, an ambulance has pulled up and maybe you heard something on a radio as you're going past the desk or something, that the ambulance is coming in and that there was um, a, a young man with an amputated limb being brought in. And he's missing, he's missing an arm. The hospital bill will cost the leg, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, he's coming in missing a limb, and so they're being uh, real generous, they're not taking the other limb. It's not the the kid I talked only to last time. a leg instead of an arm and a leg. He lost. You his do buddy. hear that? Yeah. The, so the name will come up, and you do hear that uh, his name is Sam. Sam, that's, that's the same Sam. The sa oh, his Sam. friends. Sam, Sam, was, Sam no. is the one we met. Sam, oh, he's the kid that you talked. To. Uh oh, it was his friend Paul that was attacked by the one day. Yeah. He Sam was a... left. Sweet, wasn't I, he up in the the? I put uh, him in a penthouse in the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Would he have uh -huh. left that? Could it have went there and it got him? went into the hotel and killed a guy? 
Well, you'd have yeah. to find out. You have to check. It can like shape out. change, right? It can go anywhere it wants. Yeah. But that would also mean it was it would leave behind a bloody mess in a penthouse, well, yeah. which could not easily be blamed on a cougar. <laughs> I I don't think it really cares. <laughs> Right. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If that's the situation that happened, the sheriff's gonna really have a really hard time explaining that he doesn't he have what... a killer in town. That's on him. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm uh, just saying you could get a yeah. little bit of assistance there, and he might get off your backs. Oh. I'm not worried about the cops. Uh, but yeah, I will just go and and then uh, get that like. Uh, Sam's out, right? Can I ask where they got, where he came from? Of the, uh, of, uh, or can I look it up in the computer? Or... Um, there isn't a file for him yet because he's just being brought okay. in. Um, he's in triage, you know, or they're bringing him in and putting him in triage. Is, are the paramedics there? Yeah, they're just, they've just arrived. Can I ask them where where where'd you pick up this kid? I just saw him. Well, earlier. they're with him right now. No, no, they're they're literally just arrived, so they've wheeled okay. him in. He's in triage right now, and so if you want to walk into the ER area where they're doing the triage and where they no are, no, <laughs> you can, I don't. You could talk to them. No, that might bring some unwanted attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if I can wait out of sight until they leave. And the doctors take over. I'll ask them then. Uh, yeah. Okay. They're like, hey, where'd you pick up that kid? I, I, I just saw him earlier today. At the casino. Uh, the kid was out on one of the trails. Uh, <laughs> he's trying to get an early start or something. Said he got Wait. attacked by a crazy guy. Really? That is crazy. Oh, have a good day, guys. Your life savers. Uh, you too. Nah, I'm just a paper pusher, man. You guys are the real heroes. <laughs> All right. Go. So, Todd, what about you? What are you going to do? Uh, I am going to find a uh, you know, janitor's closet or something uh, to, to ditch the coat in. Mm -hmm. No problem. And go back to uh, the room and try to check and see if uh, the, the deputy thinks that there's anything amiss with us having, you know, stepped out for a while. No. Oh, he's concerned with Dell. Yeah. That was part of the deal was uh, keep good, an eye good, and not let him go anywhere in case there needs to be a trial. Mm -hmm. The rest uh, has to be made. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, there's um, there's um, some commotion from the ER and um, clattering of trays and metal things and some screams and um, uh, I, I will jump up and see what the commotion is. Yeah, so uh, up at the room where you're at, you'll hear it from the nurse's station more than anything you won't hear the clattering the oh, um yeah. oliver would probably hear about it as he's you know further down the hall or whatever he hasn't gone back to the room just yet um he'll you'll hear it more firsthand oliver but you hear from the nurses at the nurses station there's like a beep and a you know some kind of a voice over the loudspeaker calling out some kind of a code and the nurses look and they're like Someone's in the ER causing what, doing what? And so one of them 
says, I'll stay here, you guys go. And so two or three of the nurses take off. Um, I'm thinking this is a good time to get that silver <laughs> scalpels. Got so it. I will. That's what you're on. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So There's... Todd, they've they've left the nurses station up where you're at by the room where Dell is that you've been, you know, looking around at, just making sure that everything's cool. And then they take off and they're headed to the ER. What do you do? Uh, I am going to go in and see if, see, see what uh, they've got logged for Dell here and maybe change his name. Okay. There's still a nurse there. So, oh, I thought you did. Oh, so then, yeah, then no. No, no there's, <laughs> there's still a nurse. There is a nurse still Excuse there. me. Others have gone. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> this is my by. first day here. I'm going to change Move. the records. <laughs> right. So um, you could probably find a place that's away from the nurse or wait for the nurse to go check on patients and then sit down at the computer, but, but you just run the happen. risk of somebody coming back, right? Nurse go check on patients. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I will, um, I'll, I'll stake that out and see if she does or if she goes to, uh, yeah, you could yeah. probably, generate a reason for her to go too by you know poking yeah. your head in somewhere and just pulling yeah. a lever or something yeah Unplugging uh, pull a pull a, a lead off someone's ekg monitor and right you know it starts beeping yep something um, like that so, all right so the nurse will go up and go check it out and then you'll have some time at the computer you want to mess around there yeah i i'll right. you know all right That'd be an act under pressure, I think. You're under a time limit. You keep craning your neck to see if she's coming back so you don't get caught changing records. Yeah. You're trying to change Dell's name. What do you want to change it to? Oh. Um, let's say something that's going to be sort of sounds similar, so it could have just been a, uh, a, a Desmond. mistake there. Desmond. That sounds pretty close to Dell. <laughs> We've established that. We've established, We've established that. They're that, almost yeah. the same name. Practically the same name. Yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, well, okay. So, does it have his name, his, his real name there? Um, I don't know. Or, yeah. Dell? De you were conscious when you went to the hospital. What did you tell them your name was? Um, I would have just told them uh, Del Jones, okay. which is not my real name, instead of Del Evans. Yeah. All right, because people would have known your name was Del already, right? So yep. Kelly would have looked at you sideways if you. Yeah. yeah. That. So all right. Uh, so there's that. Then I'll I'll change it to Bill. Bill Jones. Bill Jones. Del Jones. Not like Del Delroy? <laughs> no. Del Delroy Jetson? No? Okay. All right. So his name is now Bill, or are we going for the full William? Uh, no, <laughs> just Bill. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So Bill Jones now. All right. Okay. So you managed to change the name on the record. No problem. Anything else? Um, what's it, is there any sort of uh, t flag on the the file as needing to be, you know, under surveillance by the police officer? I'd like to, to delete that if there is. Uh, there are notes in there about how this is a patient that is um, under strict um, observation is not allowed to leave without police, um, you know, without the sheriff's deputy's permission or the sheriff deputy to go with him, uh, that sort of thing. So he is a, they're referring to him as a detainee. Yeah. Uh, I, I will, you know, uncheck those restrictions. Okay. 
All right. So you get that done before. Um, did we do the act under pressure? Uh, you need to do that. Let's see how oh, successful uh, yeah, you are. Yeah, I should probably actually make the roll. Yeah. <laughs> hey. There you go. All right. Both there we go. No problem. You get done Oof. what you need to get done. So you get those things taken care of. And you're up and nonchalantly standing on the other side of the counter by the time the nurse comes around the corner. Yeah. All right. Very good. I'll ask for um, a, a, apple juice. She, she, <laughs> um, she looks at you and she kind of smiles and she's like, is it for you? No, it's for my friend Bill. Ah. Uh, okay. Who? Bill over in, oh. you know. E4. And <laughs> now you hear the gunshot. So, Oliver, you're just down you're down the hall from them, so they're very loud, but up on the second floor where Dell's room is, yeah. you hear the gunshots as well. Just they're very muffled and they sound more like, you know, two cast iron frying pans wrapped in blankets banging together, right? So a little more muffled like that, but uh but Oliver, you hear them. They're just coming from the ER right down the hall, just like a couple hundred feet away. Huh. Bang, 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 bang. Just someone's unloading a gun. All right, that is strange, but I still want to get these <laughs> silver things. So I'm You got them. So I got no them. No problem. Yeah, yeah. How you, many you, hours you, has you it been, by them. the way? Um, I might ask. It's probably been three or four hours. So, you could be nearing your on your way back. Okay. Then I will uh, make my way back uh, to uh, curiosity kills the cat. But I'm gonna go check what's going on in the <laughs> ER. <laughs> Just like poke my head in and then run. Okay. So, um, Des, what are you doing to address your hunger? Well, it depends on whether or not I run into anybody on the on the road on the way back. No, no, the roads are pretty empty. It's uh, still blizzardy stuff. Right. That you're in. Well, I'm currently just trying to s ignore it, I guess. Hold hold it off. Yeah. So the only thing that would change that is if I fail to control myself in the presence of prey. So if there's no prey to control myself around, I think that's what I'm doing. Just trying to ignore it while I try to get back to where I need to be. Okay. And hope I can hold myself together at that point. All right. So we'll say you can see the hospital from where you're at. You've Come down the road. There's, um, it's been plowed, but it hasn't done a whole lot of good for the road. It's still got a lot of snow on it, and uh, they're just embankments of snow now that are up pretty high, six foot embankments of snow. Um, uh, so you're kind of walking down the side of the road along the the big embankments of snow, and mm -hmm. you can see the hospital up ahead. You saw the sign. It was, had the big H, you know, the hospital this way, that kind of stuff. And so it's okay. it's now within view. What kind of approach do you want to take to the hospital? Are you just going to go for the front door? Are you going to go in the ER? Are you going to find a different way in? I am going to imagine that my... So it depends on how aware I am of current hospital trends. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not I would know by this point that the the most likely place someone injured would go is the ER, if I knew what the ER stood for. Well, it does say emergency room. They spell it out. So, on right. all the signage and stuff. So would I know what that is and be able to put uh, together that Dell being as injured as he was would have gone there? You probably could figure that out. I mean, I think you can piece it together. It's not that difficult. Emergencies mean urgent matters. It's a hospital, so urgent so hospital matters. It would be matters. my best bet, so I'd go to the ER and go to the front desk, I guess, okay. while trying to uh, avoid all the food around me. 
All right. As you go in the ER, that's the waiting room up front there. Yeah. And there are several people um, in here that are waiting in the waiting room. So I think you're going to need to make your roll right now. Yeah. You walk in, you're confronted uh, with weak people. Yeah, Easy prey. Uh, Ooh. So seven <laughs> partial success. So do I have worse outcome, hard choice, or price to pay? I uh, yeah. Might I suggest hey. something? Sure. Uh Uh, I'm not sure how I would go about this, but would I, could I stave it off by inflicting harm on myself? Yeah, so I think the, the primary way I think that um, the price to pay of not yeah. acting out here is that um, your magic will be next to not available. Okay, so I have no magic currently. Yeah. Okay. If if you choose to not find a way to feed here. I will have to accept that for now. You're kind of losing some of your monstrous advantage here, some of those monstrous powers. Yeah, I'm starting to look a lot more dead than a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's you're and you're feeling just generally weak, like you're getting the flu kind of not and feeling well. anyone who's i will say also anyone who can see the see my eyes they're normally pale blue right now they're almost white yeah and you have a, a tortured look on your face mm -hmm. so i'm gonna go to the front desk uh-huh which would be very believable for someone who looks as bad as i currently <laughs> look do sick. yeah <laughs> i'm gonna go to the front desk Try to get the attention of whoever's there. Mm -hmm. Sure. There's a woman there. Ex <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Um. Yes. What's going on? Right. I'm looking for my associates who are here. It came here. It came here before I did. Honey, you don't look so good. Maybe you need to sit yourself down. Here, take this clipboard, fill out these papers, and bring them back when you're done. I, I don't think a doctor can help me with what I've got. Thanks, though. If I could just see my associates, the I believe Adele was one of them, the one that was most injured. He came in with a, an animal attack, I suppose, would be the most likely. Animal attack. All right, let me look. Del, Del. There's no, there's no Del here. Under a Sorry. <laughs> he may have put himself under a different name. Now, why would he do that? He's a rather paranoid individual. So I should look in psychiatry. Hold on, let me look here. Perhaps, but probably not. His most grievous wounds were the ones inflicted by the animal. animal. There was also two others that were with him. Uh, my nephew, Oliver, and another Todd. Well, I don't see anyone. I mean, there's a lot of people by other names than Dell. <laughs> Do you have anything he more to go a, on? He had one of the injuries was a bite on the shoulder. Well, why don't you have a seat and I will check it out and see what I can find. Thank you. Um, it is most appreciated. Then uh, there's oh, gunshots and I, screams. <laughs> as I'm heading turned around, my I just sigh and try to go could you please just let me back there I'll 
She's there. They've they're scattered. That my friends There's are involved gunshots in going them. on. Bang! 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 Is the Nobody door is. nearby locked at all? Uh, they are. It is locked. It has to be. You know, there's a button has to be pressed for it in order to go. As everything's secured. And I try to force it open. Just. Yeah, you can try. I want you to do an act under pressure to see if you can, if you have enough strength to break the door. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely. 13. Yeah. Yep. I All just right. casually rip the door open and yeah. walk back there, try to follow where the gunshots are. Okay. Yeah. So the gunshots coming from the back of the ER, the, the whole triage bay, basically. And so, yeah, just past that door and to the right. And there's people running towards you. There's general chaos going down there. There's screams, there's gunshots. Is anyone, no one's trying to stop me, though. Um, I, I they're do, not really worried will, about you. I will point out that as I'm going back there, I am going to draw my sword. Because that is... <laughs> I'm going into a dangerous situation. That's I want to be armed. Any chance your sword is still glowing? Uh, probably. This unless many hours later, your I don't your, know. It depends. I I would say maybe your magic. I put a lot of I put a lot of power into it. it and I I did extra power to make it glow brighter. It would probably be a lot more dim now. You need to shake it, it some more. Maybe be, it will get. <laughs> yeah, I'll just whip it a little bit as I unsheathe it, and it kind of flickers for a bit right? before igniting. All right. Um, there is another hallway that tees into the hallway you're in. And there are people running up that way, running past you. And then you see Oliver scoot around the corner right there. And you guys see each other. Oliver. Hey. That was... <laughs> was that you shooting? Uh, do I... I don't use a gun. Well, then I don't you have should... one. <laughs> he holds up his sword. <laughs> I have my sword that's kind of flickering with little bits of little arcs of energy. Wow. I don't usually need one. Well, anyway, I guess there goes. You know the being room that's secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit too tired to care right now, son. Will you take me to Dell's room? Uh, that's not where the gunfire is coming from, and I wanted to check out the gunfire. <laughs> I will go see what the gunfire is. I will point out where Dell's room is. It's in front. All right. Well, I'm I'm heading to Dell's room because he's um, for two reasons. Almost on an instinctual level, I know he's probably the weakest one here. But that's not what I'm trying to tell myself the reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so... My instincts are driving me towards the weakest prey in so this how, place. How, are, how do you know where Dell's room is? Uh... Ta I told uh, Oliver pointed it out. Oh, he told, yeah. said he, okay. he just said he told Second me where Second floor, it is. room, whatever. Yeah. 274. Yeah. <laughs> watch uh, out. There's a the reason I'm you got to put the sword away before you get going. there. There's a de deputy watching him. So don't go in with the sword. He will try and shoot you if you show up with a weak ass lightsaber. There will be more gunfire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will tell you what a lightsaber is later. <laughs> I assume it is a saber that glows with light. Yeah, which is, is. mostly <laughs> what this is almost like. But this is technically a long sword, not a saber. Yeah, and I don't think a lightsaber is actually a saber. It looks like kind of just like a glow stick. <laughs> anyway, I will make my way <laughs> to Dell's room because, well, uh, for the reason I have stated before, instinctually, as well as uh -huh. the reason I'm trying to convince myself of which is the fact that if said attacker of the hospital is the ghoul or a similar creature, it will most likely be going towards Dell anyway because of its vendetta. So that's where I'm headed. All right. Oliver, you 
Uh, go to the end of the hall where the emergency room is. There's a couple of, um, what are those called? Like stable doors or wh whatever they're referred to. Uh, there's a couple of double swinging doors. Mm -hmm. And um, as you kind of look through the little windows in them so they don't, uh, you know, hit people that are going in and out, um, you don't see a whole lot. Um, and then you do see suddenly a spray of blood go across that door on the other side. So it splats on the window and then the, the other window on the other door as well gets some spray as uh, somebody clearly um, let some of their blood out all over the place um, for some reason. <laughs> Sprayed up all up on the door. Uh -oh. Can I see who's firing at what? Uh, there, there haven't been gunshots for the last few seconds, um, but it sounded like somebody was putting out quite a bit of ammo uh, initially. Okay. So, nothing just yet. Can I peek through the window? Yeah, so you can still see some through there, and you see that there is somebody laying very awkwardly across a counter, like not in a normal kind of position, like they're half off of it, like they're not moving. So it's an odd way to sleep, so it's probably not that. Uh, dead. Yeah. Still, yeah. Does it? Are they dressed in like a security guard outfit or anything? No, that one is in scrubs. It was looks like okay. maybe one, um, a male nurse or an orderly or something like that. That's what you can see in the view. A lot of the windows obscured now by the blood that's also now dripping down a little bit. There's sprays, but there's some thicker chunks that are kind of drooping down the window. Does the room feel cold on the other side? <laughs> oh, good question. Um, you put your hand up against the door. It feels cold, but it could be also just because there's doors to the outside in that room, you know, where they wheel people in from the ambulance bay and that sort of thing. Could be that. It's not exceptionally cold. Not like in the mine. Okay. But that's cold. Uh, uh, wow. I'm gonna push open the door <laughs> and then like step back just to see what I see when I push open the door all the way. <laughs> okay, yeah. Once you get the door open, you see that there are things toppled over carts and you know, medical equipment that's on the ground and. Um, you know, just imagine an ER area where there's curtain, there's some curtains are torn, um, kind of down, ripped from the rings that hold it around the, you know, the top part. They've been torn off a little bit. There's, uh, now you see more blood. There's like a whole swath of blood over there and a pool of blood coming around a counter, uh, corner over there. And there's three or four more bodies you're finding that are just laying on the ground dead. And then you see one um, uh, security guard uh, that's off to one side and he's dead and he has been slashed open and blood and guts are pouring out of him um, right through the whatever, you know, vest he had on. He had a, a armored vest on and so Kevlar is apparently not that great against, you know, slashing weapons as well as it is impact weapons. So um, he wore the wrong kind of vest today. <laughs> um, and so he's dead. And there is a gun uh, that probably was in his hand that it's dropped and scattered further away from three or four feet away from where he's laying there dead. Um, his right. eyes... Um, his, his face is turned towards you and he's clearly dead not moving his face is um, you know frozen in an expression of um, wonder and amazement now was this the room they brought Sam into 
Oh, it would have been, yeah. Is Sam in there? You don't see Sam. Right. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and the bike can turn people. Uh, but, but I mm-hmm. do I see any sign of like? There's no monster in there, right? <laughs> just dead bodies. Um, you can't tell just yet. You just push the door open and let it close again. So that's what you're able to take in real fast. Okay. You want to go into the room? You might be able to. Learn more. I am going to just go. Hello? Is there one in there? Pushing the door open again to do that? Yes. Okay. So because you're kind of holding the door open while you're calling out, you do now hear from across the triage bays, several little exam rooms over, you do hear some sloshing and slurping and um, it stops when you say hello. Ah, crap. I'll breathe out into the room. Does it turn cold? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna just... Hey. hey. Hello? Sam, you in there? Okay, so <laughs> the um, there is a little bit of movement over there where you heard that sound coming from. And then what you see is this huge hand, long claws, like the fingers are extended and then end in long claws. And so it's this longer than normal hand. Rip through the curtain like Freddy Krueger, right? Just just four swaths of tear go through the curtain and beyond that you see a dark haired kid um, who has blood splattered on him and um, it's hard to see the full picture through just these cuts open in the curtain but he does snap his head up at you and his eyes have little pinpricks of red in them and it looks like it's probably Sam. And he takes um, that same clawed hand and he slashes the other way and just tears through the rest of the curtain. Um, some because of the claws and others just because the claws grabbed the tears that were already there and just tore open the rest of the curtain. And you see Sam covered in blood, but mostly where his mouth is was there is a larger extended jaw that looks like it's unhinged, like the mandible is unhinged from the rest of the skull to make more room. And he has this long fork-like tongue sticking out, and his mouth is just, you know, just full of blood coming down. Um, and a chunk of meat is still kind of hanging there inside the mandible of the jaw. And he just looks at you and then instantly starts to charge right toward you. I'll close the door and run. Yeah, you see, by the way, as you close the door, that he does have some bullet holes in him as well. Yeah. And um, so you were running, and all of a sudden the door is behind you. You've gotten almost to the teeth, running as fast as you can, even in your boot. Um, because you've got one of those dumb boots on your foot. You're like, <laughs> like this, and the doors just <laughs> kind of almost come off the hinges. They bust open so loud. Yeah, and lost around the kitchen scene from Jurassic Park. Yeah, and did he look like he was like? Did he look like he's a mixture of Sam with a Wendigo? Yeah. Uh, sure. Looks similar. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting. The way you said that. <laughs> but yes. I'm running. <laughs> Freshly windigoed. <perhaps. laughs> okay. Uh, and so, all right. So he's chasing you. He's chasing you down the hall. 
All right, so he does have a lot of blood on him, which makes his traction not so good. So he Scooby Doo's a little bit, trying to get running again after busting through the doors. He like bangs up against the wall and leaves this huge, you know, smear of blood on the wall as he pushes off and he's coming after you. And he does have only one arm. The other is a stub that ends just above the elbow. And um, and it's got black necrotic tissue already at the stub there. And he is running running after you. How are you getting to the second floor? What's your plan? Gonna go uh, to the elevator, hit the stairs? Hit the stairs. Uh, and then <laughs> just desperately hoping there's like wondering. humanity Ding, in just, here. Like waiting. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> there's a, I'll hit the door as I run by, but I'm not getting it. And then hoping there's a little bit of humanity in him and just yell as I run. Remember, I got you that penthouse. <laughs> All that alcohol. <laughs> that was on me, man. <laughs> humanity. Choose life. Okay. And so you bust into the, the uh, door to the stairwell and you start booking it up to the second floor. It's going to take it- you... It's huh? a hospital door. Is it like, is there any way, like, you know, those are pretty, usually pretty solid. Is there any way to like seal it or anything? Or is it just a. They, uh, they Could are like jam solid, it up? but I think what you're going to find is that these, uh, the staircase, the door itself would be, has a handle on the outside. On the inside is one of those push bars. Right. Right. So that people can get out of yeah, the yeah, stairwell. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Uh, yeah, I'll just keep going. <laughs> there's really nothing <laughs> I can think of right there that you could use to. No. Wedge I was just her. making sure. But yeah, I'll just keep running. Uh, all right. So you just start running up the stairs. Go, 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 go. Trying to get up the stairs. <laughs> all right. I'm going to give you one act under pressure. Sure. Opportunity to screw up. Let's see how it goes. I'm pretty cool. Oh, God damn. Oh, not cool at all. <laughs> not cool with that boot on. All right. So what happens is this. You are getting up the stairs, and one of the half of your boot is, like, starting to break. It's not supposed to be used under this kind of a duress. And uh, so as you get to the door, you push open the door... And um, you slip a little um, from just your momentum. As you're pushing the door, you kind of bang into a little bit. And so you lose your balance. And as you go out the door, the door closes on your boot. And you topple to the ground with your foot hung on the door uh, as it's closed. It's kind of trapped you temporarily. And stopped you dead in your tracks. Right. And you then feel something grab your boot and pull. Down the hall, quite a distance, room 270, what? Four? One. 271. 271 is right there. And outside of that room, stands Todd drinking some apple juice. Because it wasn't for (laughs) Dell in the first place. Bill, it wasn't for Bill. And you're sipping there talking to the nurse as he busts out this uh, stairwell door and then falls to the ground and then you watch him get yanked back in a little bit. Uh. Any, Any last words, Oliver? Baby, what? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> baby, we have to stop at that. That is where we. That is where we stop. <laughs> baby, Wendigo. Okay. <laughs> MVP goes to Oliver right there. <laughs> baby, Wendigo. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. It looks like the fight against baby Windigo is going to take place next week. And who knows what will happen after that. It could be that 
that daddy comes to play too. We'll see what happens there. It could have been, or we have been to storm a certain care facility. It's possible that a certain vampire was followed all the way back to the hospital. That's true too. Oh no. <laughs> all right, so we'll see what happens next week on the next episode of whatever you guys are called. <laughs> we really got to choose a name, guys. <laughs> All right. Good job, guys. I uh, hope you had fun this week, and uh, we will catch you all next week. See you next week. Right. Okay, great. And, uh, yep. Feel free to. Uh, are we doing the, uh, the end of session? Oh, stuff? yes. Thank you. Let's do that. So if you would. Um, Pull up your end of session move. You can just pipe it into the chat if you run it, right? And then, or just look at Desmond's. There are four questions you need to ask. And um, if you can answer yes to one or two of them, you get one XP. If you can answer yes to three or four of them, you get two XP. I think we saved someone from certain death or worse. Sure. Saved, uh, what was her name, Kelly? Yep, Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Uh, do we learn something new and important about the world? Baby Wendigo! <laughs> yes. We learned that we learned how Wendigos propagate. Uh, <laughs> did we and, learn something? And maybe we learned about something out in the wilds as well. So. Yeah, and we also yeah. learned about the secret the facility Illuminati. out there. They got a base. Did we learn something new and important about one of the hunters? Well, that's exactly was how much thinking of a of... meeting <laughs> you can take. Desmond was thinking yeah. of meeting Del. And how hungry Desmond is now. Yeah. Well, different... we didn't really learn that. <laughs> you guys haven't learned yeah. anything about it yet. But I've learned it. Uh, you guys, nah, that would be because you didn't learn a lie. That wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think we got two. All right, so you all get one XP. I'll okay. also grant you an XP if you write a journal about this uh, about this episode, and I'll have a place for you to connect it to. I'm going to catch up on the uh, the right. world anvil and get. I'll I'll put the recordings up. I do make recordings and I post them privately to YouTube by link only, and I'll put the link yeah, okay. inside the session report so you can watch back any part of this that, that you feel so inclined to torture yourself. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good night, everybody. We'll see you all next week. Take care. All right. Yeah. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Bye Take now. care. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.